guys, Dave from Dave's Lawyer Shopworks here, and on this episode, we are going to change an injector on a 2003 to 2007 and a half Dodge 5.9 liter Magnum Common Rail Cummins. So uh, the truck is a 2006. You've seen it before in a previous video where I was doing uh, some valve blast adjustments. Now we did the valve blast adjustments to perform a basic overall maintenance on the truck, as well as a couple of little odds and ends. And we did those because it had a little knocking, ticky, tacky sound in the top end. And we weren't sure where it was, so you start with the basics. We did the valve lash, still had some noise after. Um, and we've traced it down to basically, we got a little fuel knock. The injectors are probably washing out, getting old. And uh, the fuel spray pattern isn't what it used to be. So uh, we're going to swap out uh, all six injectors, but today... I'm going to show you one injector and the reason why I'm only showing you one is because I want to go over the proper procedure for doing it. I've checked out a bunch of YouTube videos and everybody's doing them. They're doing them basically correct. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it, but there's a couple little fine details I'd like to go over with you just to just to show you where uh, where we're getting to where we need to be basically. So uh, Got her all opened up here. Now I've already gone ahead and removed the valve cover, the lower plate, the injector wiring, the rocker arms, the rocker arm uh, valve bridges, I guess you would call them. And we're at the injectors themselves. So from there, we're going to uh, go on down and swap out an injector. You'll see a later video where I'm doing the whole shebang. But for now, this is where we're going. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna go over a couple quick little things. When you're at the injector, um, you can start with getting a couple tools together. You're going to need a 15 16 wrench, and you're gonna need a 5 16 or eight millimeter socket, and possibly a couple other things. We'll see how this goes together. All right, for starters, you're going to loosen off the two injector bolts. That's it, that's all. From there, take your 15 16 wrench, put it on the injector connector tube locking nut. Right here, this collar, that's the connector tube. So there's a fuel line that runs from the common rail runs over, connects to the connector tube that supplies high pressure fuel to the injector through the cylinder head. And then the injector will go ahead and compress that even higher and inject it on demand when the computer tells it. So we will pull out the connector tube now, sometimes these can be in there pretty stiff and hard. Um, if they are, don't worry. You can work them back and forth, a little bit of penetrating fluid, whatever you want. <clears throat> so there's our tube. Uh, sorry, that's our tube uh, nut, retainer nut, collar, whatever you want to call it. Now, sometimes you can get this tube out just by wiggling it, just like that guy. Sometimes you can't. So I use this specialty tool. It's a Miller special tool number 9015. And it screws right onto the end of it. And it will protect the threads while you pry it out of the cylinder head. Usually a couple little, little uh, pops and she'll pop right out. Didn't need it in this case. So next thing to think about these connector tubes, if you see any rust or corrosion on them, it means that the fuel has been contaminated at some point with water and you should replace it. This one looks nice and clean. The other part is right here on the head. You want to roll around. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a shiny spot all the way around. That's where the tube is crushed into the injector and seated in. This one looks even and clean and we'll be happy to give it a quick wipe up and reuse it. Next thing, fuel injector. So finish taking the two little uh, M6 bolts out. They are metric. 
and once they're out, well, they're in five, I think, in five or in six, whatever they are. Either way, out they come, put them aside for reuse, and then we're going to try to pull the injector out by hand. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just grip on it really good, start giving a little twist, and this one will not come out. They generally will come out on a uh, warmed up engine. Unfortunately, it's been sitting for a few days now because I'm still waiting on some parts for it. But you just get your screwdriver underneath the collar. Find your happy spot. And give a little pop pop. And there she is. So, from there, you make sure that your copper sealing washer, it's a crush washer, comes out with the injector. The odd time they will stay in the head. But that's basically it. There's your injector. And I'm going to go get the replacement one. I'll be right back. Okay, here's our new injector. Now, key things to think about. There is a flat spot on this side of the collar and a round spot on that side of the collar. That's just for visual orientation. The collar can't rotate. There's a little, mm, little uh, groove down the side and it's pinned. So it will not rotate. It will not come off. You can't mess it up. You can put the injector in the wrong way though still. And the way you know that you're putting it in right is this is where the connector tube goes into the side of the injector. Like this. And so this side has to be orientated to the driver's side of the truck. You get a brand new crush washer. And they're kind of pressed on. I've never seen them come loose, but I have seen them stay in the head. So you just slide it on down there nice and easy the o-ring will retain it give her a nice little pop and a snap like that and we're happy now back to our two little bolts boom and boom you just go ahead and screw them on down finger tight okay here's your first torque spec you take your torque wrench <laughs> You tighten these guys down evenly because this collar will rock and you can have it at an angle, but you want them down evenly. You tighten them down to 44 inch pounds. Boom. That's it. Nothing. You're literally just making sure the injector is bottomed out all the way in the hole. Then back them off. Leaves everything loose, the injector can spin. That's very important. Because then, we give our connector tube a little wipe. So we give it a little wipe and a clean off. These two little uh, check balls here, they're basically just for orientation. You put them straight up. Slide her into the cylinder head. Make sure it's seated. There's a little groove in the head for the check balls. And I just usually grab it and just usually grab it and snap it in place. That worked out quite well. So now that that's in place properly, we can put the collar on. Just give the collar a little wipe off. Tighten him on. If you have to clean the threads, you got to clean the threads. If you got to put a little lube on it, whatever, but normally they just go right back in. So you take your uh, torque wrench again, tighten it to 15 foot pounds. Sometimes you can see the injector uh, turning its rotation when you do it just a little bit. But 15 foot pounds, and what that does is it seats the tube into the injector, centers the injector on the tube. And then we know it's set down correctly. The next thing 
is to tighten your injector down to 89 inch pounds. Inch pounds, guys, not foot pounds. And that's it. It's literally slightly past snug. Now, once that's tightened in, all you have left to do is take your torque wrench again. And yes, I know this isn't a torque wrench. You gotta tighten your connector tube nut to 36 foot pounds. That's it. You don't have to go crazy. You don't gotta get all Gorilla Torque on these things. They are a precision piece. And once you've got all that stuff done, you just reassemble the engine after doing all six or if you're only doing one or two or three, whatever. So you have to pay close attention to these guys. They're your uh, connectors. There's nuts attached to the wires. And you just, you don't even, you hardly tighten them, man. Like, you just give them that down to zero with your fingers and then just a little, the tiniest little, like not even a sixteenth of a turn, like nothing, just done. They will snap off. I know this from experience. And it's not cool. Let's just say that. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to do any more on this engine right now. I am waiting for more parts. Um, some of my uh, injector lines are corroded and this uh, this little collar right here is spinning on some of them from the corrosion buildup and when the collar spins it can weaken the line and maybe not give you the best seal and you don't want a high pressure injector line <sighs> spraying fuel all over your engine bay. These things had a problem with number four injector on some of them and the line would fail on number four only. There was something with the way it was mounted and we had to replace a lot of them and it would spray the whole side of the engine bay. Anyway, it's never a bad thing to go ahead and replace all your injector lines. Um, if they're in good shape, hey, don't worry about it, man. Don't even second guess it, just put them back on. But uh, I'll show you a whole nother video on doing that stuff when the time comes for now that's it in a nutshell and i hope you liked it it's it is the textbook way to put an injector in of course minus using the actual torque wrenches but i have done i can't tell you how many sets well over 100 possibly over 200 i worked at chrysler for almost 10 years like these things were brand new when i was doing it and uh man you get pretty used to just getting the job done pretty simple but that's the way she goes, man. And uh, I hope you found it informative. So please like and subscribe. And uh, get on out there and get wrenching, guys. Like, I like doing these videos because I like to think that I'm just helping you maybe get your brain work and get over a little hump that says you can't. I don't like can't. Let's make hot rods happen. And let's keep the mechanic work going in every form we can. We can do it.